What's up, everyone? Welcome to the 455th episode of the Pokemon Podcast. It's super effective. I'm your host, SBJ. With me is Greg. Hello. Happy Discounted Chocolate Day. It's the oh, best yes. day. Monday. It's Monday. Mm. All the chocolate goes on discount. Mm. I need to make a trip to Target to get my discounted chocolate. You gotta get the spa- my house. strawberry uh, jelly bean, st- straw, straw, starburst, not strawburst. <laughs> well, starburst jelly beans. I. Th- Those I th- are good. They're no. good. I think the Jolly Rancher jelly beans are better. No, I don't know if I've had those. What's jelly no? belly jelly beans. Oh, oh, we have well, we have a whole bunch of jelly belly jelly beans because we had a giant container at the Costco. Because mm. uh, they didn't have a giant container of Twizzlers, so instead we get a giant container mm. of uh, Jelly Billies. Choices we have to make in life, true. But true. there are so many flavors of Jelly Billy that I don't like that I just like. My husband just grabs a handful and just eats whatever, and I think that's madness. Well, I'm I'm more in your husband's line, but. You are aware that if you shop at places other than Costco, you can actually buy single flavor bags of Jelly Belly Nobody jelly beans that. and then mix and match for whatever Nobody taste sensation you would like to create for your handful of no. jelly beans. Nobody does that. That's madness. W- Will is here. Yeah, I still don't have a house. <laughs> <laughs> uh... It is so weird to me. I am like literally like running around the streets of Minneapolis with money in my hands. Like, take my money, take my money. Please let me have a house. I, and I have seen places with you. I yes, know that, that you have looked at places. That was not, that place was not, not cutting the, not making the grade there. No. <laughs> I mean. Price okay. was right. Price, price was right. Was right. If bedrooms, I wanted to have the... my bedroom in the living room because I can't fit an actual bed in the bedroom. Yes. The bedrooms are a little odd. Uh, my <laughs> super large size love sack would take up the entirety <laughs> of one of those rooms. You could have yes. lived in the basement. The basement was nice. I feel like Greg in another life is like a real estate agent. And you, like know, I, you know, Greg's mom house, is a real estate agent. Yeah, my mom's a real estate agent. So every Jeanette, house we see, Greg is like, sees the positive in it. Or <laughs> oh, oh, like, oh, you should not. have been there. Well, okay, so. I, I have never rented a house before, right? And this is literally my first time renting this part. Well, whatever. Mm. I, that whole concept of the house doesn't come with a washer and dryer. You can bring your own or yeah, rent one from us. I'm like, that's, excuse no. me? No, that was bad. I will <laughs> bet we walked in. I had a lot of, I had a lot of, okay, this could be nice until we walked into the bedrooms of that place. And yes. I was like, yes. oh, no. Yes. <laughs> no, this is not. This is not an actual house. These are afterthoughts. Well, it was a house in like the 1850s when people were about two feet shorter than they currently are. And they lived in smaller homes. Correct. And it had a nice size bathroom at the sake of uh, both bedrooms. Yes. (laughs) I was like, what are you doing? Well, speaking of afterthoughts, uh, this is the 25th anniversary of Pokemon. Is it? Supposedly. I wouldn't know. And there's not right now a lot of Pokemon news, but we do have some. We always have some. Look, when I say there's not a lot of Pokemon news, I mean, we got a two hour show instead of a five hour show. Yes. Uh, <laughs> I mean, if, there, if there's even on the least Pokemon news week of the year, we can dig up. Some, even oh. if we have to go out and make it ourselves. I mean, remember, uh, SBJ has gone two articles from the past. I have and brought one. them back mm. forward. So <laughs> there is nothing, there is nothing off the table. I'm half expecting him to say, well, I expect this article to be written at some point. So let's spend an hour talking oh, about this. Hypothetical future, have, future uh, news. I have an XY interview that I dug up that is very good. <laughs> ah. But we have, even though it's a slow new news week, we have enough news where we don't have to d- dig up that XY. It's it's there. It's we're saving it. Why are we saving it? I'll play the long con. It's like when Travis was on the show and they gave me permission to read the email they wrote in and I mm. saved it for like 17 weeks before we're, I read it. We're saving the XY news article for the remakes. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yep. Um, 
We do have some Pokemon news. Uh, not a lot, but we do have some ranging from a variety of topics here. We got some TCG. We got some Masters. We got some Go. We got somebody breaking in and stealing Pokemon cards. You know, the, the plethora oh. of, of things to, to cover this, this show. But let's start off with um, some TCG news, which is uh, from PSA. PSA is a grading service. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, PSA, I, I would say at this point, PSA is like the Kleenex of grading services. There are multiple grading services. There's PSA, there's Beckett, there's like the other one I can't remember that no one uses. And then there's another one that no one really uses, but there's a bunch mm-hmm. of them. Uh, but everyone just defaults and says PSA. So Even though think, I feel like Beckett I, is just as repu- like good. I think Beckett I, is fancier. Yeah, when I was working in a card shop in my youth, it was always about Beckett. Everyone was coming in to get the Beckett book, and everybody always talked about Beckett, and they would ask me questions about baseball cards, and I'd looked at them like they, had, they were insane, and then I would call over the sports card person. And then he would talk to them about Beckett. This PSA thing, that's like a public service announcement. I don't, yeah, exactly. I don't know. I don't. Why is public service announcement writing think, cards? I mean, it does not benefit the public to say that this Charizard has bad edges, whatever that means. I think. Mm. I think there's like two things here. Number one is PSA is like easier to say than Beckett. Kind of rolls off the tongue. Is it? Because Beckett's more a syllables. name. Yeah. <laughs> I don't and know, PSA is a says, bunch of letters. Well, that's why I say it's like the Kleenex because you guys, you could just call everything tissue, but people just call everything Kleenex at this point. Ah, I see what you're saying. And then the second thing is PSA partnered with Logan Paul, and Ooh. so uh, no, I'm oh. out. I'm so Boycott. out. Bye. We, we, we talked about this before. How Logan Paul bought like all these first edition mm-hmm. original booster boxes, and he then sent them in to PSA and PSA does their grading and they graded them, but they also put Logan Paul on the grading. So when, when he resells them, whether that's for personal gain or charity, I think he's done some for charity. Look, I'm trying to see the positive of some sort of light here. Um, you could be like, well, this is a PSA Charizard. This is a PSA Charizard, but this is a PSA Charizard that was open from Logan Paul. It's so a Logan pop- Paul PSA yeah. Charizard. So it's tainted with racism. Mm, yeah, all kinds yeah. of issues <laughs> a lot of issues there i'm just saying i'm just giving you the reason why psa might be popular and which comes to the article Ugh. psa customer update april 2021 which was published on march 30th hello psa customers since my wait, last wait, wait wait can i just say it's a psa psa yep okay thank you go ahead <laughs> Let's skip, skip, skip something this. Uh, I'll try to illustrate what has happened with the sheer volume of orders that PSA received in early March has fundamentally changed our ability to service the hobby. In reality is that we've recently received more cards in the last three days than we have in the last three months. Even after the surge, submissions continue at a never before seen level. Given our growth, I'm not 100% what caused that specifically the more cards in three days in the last three months um uh given our growing backlog it would be dangerous for disingenuous i think it's dangerous works disingenuous for us to continue and accept submissions for cards that we are unable to process for the foreseeable future it is an unpleasant conclusion especially after march 1st's price increase they increased how much they cost a grade i think it was like eight dollars before it might be like 14 or something um but it is necessarily to properly serve the customers who have already submitted to PSA effective immediately. PSA is temporarily suspending our value, regular and express service levels, which will allow us to fully unbox and receive recent surge of orders to focus on uh, our most impactive service lines. We are taking a tiered approach to reintroducing these service levels back on July 1st. Um, And then they are talking about how they have bought a 60,000 square foot California operation on top of adding another 62,000 square foot warehouse a couple months ago. Um, and they, they have, uh, as of right now, 783 people working for them. Uh, and back in January of 2020, they only had 420 employees working for them. And so, yeah, you can't, uh, I actually did a YouTube video about this in February 
And in that YouTube video, I talked about how PSA put out an article in December saying that they were falling dramatically behind. And if you sent in cards in December or January, you probably wouldn't get them back until June or July unless you paid for Express. And Express, you weren't even getting back quickly. Uh, and now you can't send anything to PSA. So uh, this is not this, even regular. No, everything is closed for PSA. How hard is it to look at a card? Yeah, oh, you got it. It come on. They're providing a quality service here. What's They're not just they? like, eh, I like this one. Give it yeah, a yeah, yeah, yeah. I, yeah, yeah, I right would disagree. Uh, 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 PSA nine. All right, good. All right, send it out. It's, it's just like how magnitude works in Pokemon. They just roll a die, pick a number, and send it back. Are you going to argue with them? Who's going to argue? Who are you going to go to? You're going to go to Beckett? Apparently not, according to Steve. Well, you know, well, no, I would go to Beckett. I think <laughs> Beckett is the answer. <laughs> because I'm pretty sure Beckett has like, Beckett breaks down all four categories on the top part of it, where PSA doesn't. PSA just gives you a number. Beckett is like centering a 10, uh, edges a 9.5, hollow of 10. But also... I've seen PSA 10s where the centering is way off. And then somebody's always like, oh, well, so and so is very generous on the centering. And it's like, what do you, what do you mean? <laughs> are, are, isn't this supposed to be a standard? <laughs> no. Why would it be a standard? It's literally people looking at it. It's not like they have a computer program. If they did, this whole thing would be done. That's what they need. They need to put these 783 people on a computer program. Yes, the artificial intelligence is can scan to can rate these cards much rating, faster than pitiful humans. Rating cards is dumb. It really is. Like, it, yes, but like because here we are. Look, I have, I have. Where is it? I have it buried on my desk. I have this. If you're if you're if you're listening to the podcast, I'm I'm oh, showing you. That's Spirit money Black. right there. Shiny Charizard. Yeah. Demon. This whole article was an excuse for him to flex yeah, that just card. Yeah, flex at us. Sure. Look what I have. Uh, Charizard, uh, shiny right? shard of VMAX. What, what set is this from? Shining Legend. Shining Fates. Shining, shining Fates. Legendly Fates. Shining Legendly Fates. I pulled this. <laughs> I very, pulled this. Look, look, look. Very, very cool, right? And I can already tell you it's not a PSA 10. Why? Because I one, I have eyes. Number two is there's like a small little white speckle here in the bottom corner. You can barely see it. You got to bust out your Detective Pikachu magnifying glass to see it. But I know if I send it to PSA or Beckett or whatever the other company are, they're going to see that little dot that I see. And they're going to be like, mm, it's a 9.5. It's a 9.2. It's a not like it's not a 10. So I even send it. Why would you send a card that you know is not going to be a 10? Can you paint over that dot, though? Nah, and and, the, and look, I I I open the pack very carefully, like I do all my packs. But buying Pokemon cards is dumb. Yes, because you can you can buy like a thousand packs of Shining Fates, and they could all have bad edges. There's nothing you can do to prevent it because no one knows until you open the pack. And Pokemon is has whatever quality control issues that they have. And they're pumping them out the door as fast as possible. So edges are always bad. Like centering is always mostly off. Sketch. It's it's a dumb hobby. So <laughs> yes. what are they going to do with all these people once the surge is over? Uh, seasonal hiring. Yeah, what are they like going to do with a whole other factory? Of target people? at Christmas. No, <laughs> you, you fire them. And yep. you say your time, your usefulness has passed. Your usefulness is over. Uh, and then we're going to close down this California operation because we aren't getting Pokemon cards from Logan Paul anymore. Yeah, but I mean, the answer, if you want an answer to your question, it's once again, not everybody is you. And Who? you, Me? you, you, yes. I don't send anything to PSA. I yeah, exactly. About it, but... but But the thing is, our average person who has just started buying up Pokemon cards mm -hmm because they saw Mr. Famous do it and they think it's a real thing is now also believes that for those Pokemon cards to have any real value, PSA has to rate them. Yes. So I mean, it's wrong. like, it's like they are literally going pack to hopefully top loader <laughs> you know, without, without even giving the card a, a decent look just to get it graded. Yeah, I, I don't have anything. I have one graded card, and it was sent to me as a gift. It's a first edition 
Team Rocket Squirtle. Now, the time it was sent to me as a gift, because I was like, I've never gotten a graded card before. And the time it was sent for me as a gift, I opened it on my Twitch stream. We they they said they like, thank you for making content. I really appreciate you. Here's a bunch of stuff. And I was like, wow, you like the first thought was like, wow, you sent me a PSA card. It must be worth something. And I looked it up and it was like an eight dollar squirtle, right? But now that same Squirtle card is worth five hundred dollars because sell. prices have gone up. So yeah, I should sell it because it's, sell. because it, when I got it, it was five eight dollars. Well, it was a gift. It feels very weird. To call it. <laughs> you um, when you got it, you got it for zero. Um, and now you sell it like GameStop. But yes. my problem with PSA cards is you can't put them in a binder. There's like they just take up this extra space. You gotta frame them. Yeah. No, they they are they're in the the. No, no, no. Book. You and then you buy a nice frame <laughs> to mm-hmm. so you can display it on your wall, mm-hmm. like the piece of art that it is. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I guess I would only get something PSA if I was to sell it because you're right. It does increase like you can sell PSA yeah. cards more for than yeah. not PSA. But I don't plan on selling my like I collect my cards to collect my cards. Like if I sold this Charizard. Well, now I got a hole in my collection. Well, but what's also even more bizarre to me is so you don't sell the extras. <laughs> well, if I had two Charizards, yeah, I would probably sell one of them, but I only got one Charizard. But... It's a hard life only having one Charizard. Oh, here we so, go. So here's the thing that's like even more bizarre to me is once you get a card PSA rated, you can't play with it anymore. And I buy trading cards to play trading card games. I was like, now it has zero value for me because I can't put it in a deck. Mm-hmm. That's why and, got- and, and they call me the oddball. This is what we got to do. <laughs> we got to start collecting Digimon cards. Get them graded I now. Know. No, no, no. That Digimon game is that is like a disaster waiting to happen. I heard no. it's good. You, you believe the hype. Go for it, boy. Yeah. Enjoy. I that. also look, I, I like some main, I like some Angemon. Padamon? See, I don't like the Digimon characters. That's Lily the Mon? start. No, no. I mean, there's only there's one, one that throws there. poop. That one's pretty cool. No. <laughs> what is the one that throws poop? I can't remember his name. He there's Lily also Mon? a yokai watch that is like a butt face. And yet still, no, not interested. Oh, I never got into the yokai watch. I tried. I didn't either. No. Nintendo I only did it. A copy I only of yokai watch. 14 event. Uh, Whisper is cool. He's all right. Everyone else not not uh, the the Yumkin poor the little like red cat. I can't remember his name. It's something like Yum. Yum. Come on, Greg, get me back it up. It's on Final Fantasy. It's the little I red cat. I what? I don't remember. Yon I Garuga. I no, that's not him. I it, it y- y- cut to too. get the weapons, and I do not remember any other ones. Kool Aid like Toby Kadachi. Toby Kadachi. <laughs> <laughs> that's okay, which is the what's the cat? It's the main red cat that's not Whisper. It's like isn't, Yum. Isn't Whisper a ghost? Yeah, Whisper. Whisper is like the the ghost, but they're he, all yokai. They're all yokai. They may as well be ghosts. He's like the red. You need cat. a watch to see him. He's like the Pikachu of yokai watch. But uh, that was Jibanyan. 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 Yeah. Oh, got two tails with a fire. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, it's Jib Yayan, isn't it? I have no idea. Jib. This is a bunch of adults trying to explain. You, you. Look. What what game are we? Yokai Watch characters? Here. I'm putting this in chat after I think the poop throwing Digimon. Oh, yeah. Sukumon. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Sukumon. No, no, yeah. no, no, no. This one. Yeah. Yes. Jibanyan. Yeah. Jibanyan. Yeah. He's cool. He's all right. Uh, okay. Continuing with our TCG news, battle styles still seems okay to find. Um, so Pokemon Center, we talked about last week how Pokemon Center put up battle styles on the website, and then they said limit 72, and mm-hmm. then it sold out in like 10 minutes. Well, they did that again. They put up cards. The limit was still 72. It actually lasted on Pokemon Center for about 10 hours before they were completely sold out. See? So- they're getting there uh, right now. No battle styles on Pokemon Center. I went to Target yesterday. They had battle styles on the shelf. Limit three. I bought three. 
I went to my secret place to get Pokemon cards. Don't tell anyone listening to this podcast. Don't you dare tell anyone the secret place to get Pokemon cards. What is the secret place? It's Barnes and Noble. You got to go. Oh, that's right. But you got to wait in line and ask for it behind the counter. Yeah, yeah. It's behind the counter. Yeah, yeah. So you go to Barnes and Noble. I should go to the time. I should go to the Target that time forgot and check out their stuff. You look Mm -hmm. behind the counter. They have it back there. So they had blister packs at the Barnes and Noble. Limit two. So I got myself two blister packs. Look, I'll wait in line for a blister. I ain't waiting in line for a single pack. I there is a Target in Houston, Texas that literally only sells Pokemon cards. <laughs> you can only get three, limit three, at seven a.m. on Friday mornings. I heard this. Yes, <laughs> that's how Meyer in Wisconsin does it. Meyer, you can only get Pokemon cards three p.m. on Fridays. Wow, like at least that, it's three p.m., not seven a.m. I mean, like it's just like, do they only put them out for an hour and then take them down? I think or? you've got to line up and say, yeah, "May I have my up. three packs, please?" <laughs> Why? This is madness. It is extra madness. Oh, okay, and, but I mean, it's not just Pokemon cards. It's Pokemon and MLB and NBA. I mean, cards, there is so nothing straight. left at my target. I was there. I don't know. Wednesday. Oh, I, I can guarantee and you, there's plenty of uh, call time. There wasn't. There was wow. nothing. People are it desperate. was gone. Like they're <laughs> desperate. I think they were moms and they're going, I don't know. This is the Pokemon area. I'll just buy this. It says magic on it. This must be a new type of Pokemon. <laughs> well, Mag- magic and Yu-Gi-Oh are still pretty easy to get at. Like all of my targets. Yeah. I, I am pretty sure there's a baseball card phase right now that's happening. Like ba- yeah, because all the baseball card stuff and, and NBA and cards because of NFTs and people are like, well, I can't buy an NFT because I don't know what that means, but I'll get an NBA card because it's probably the same thing. <laughs> Don't, what is have we gotten to this point really where we're just buying things because we're so bored? Yeah, I guess yes. we're Hunter just we're this bored. Monster Hunter came out and it's very good. I think it's one of the best Monster Hunters. Uh yes, agreed. Ad, advertisement, Will and I are doing a Monster Hunter podcast called The Carve. Comes it came out on Thursday. I yeah. asked to be, I will say, I asked to be on the show to give my opinion about one thing, and I was denied. You didn't show up hey, for you the did, recording. Hey, the Zoom call <laughs> was posted in the, the... I was ring fitting when you did that. You did that specifically during my ring Look, fit you time. either choose fitness or... Look, I have uh, to get fit so I can go back the to the gym. Of fitness. <laughs> we know I have to get fit so I can go back to the gym. Ooh. I cannot go to the gym in my current my current condition. This is a sad state of affairs. So, yeah, you're right, Greg. Everything is sold out for the sake of being sold out. So, Monster Hunter came out. You can't even get the the normal Monster Hunter. Yeah, Target that, don't have it. Best Buys don't have it. Everything no. is sold out. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, Not the the base version, the deluxe edition, the big box with the big statue that you'll put on your shelf that will collect dust, and then in like ten years you'll throw out because you're like, why did I ever buy this ten years ago? I but no, but it's so weird because I've never wanted an amiibo in my life, and now I want the. Not going to use expletives, Magnamolo <laughs> Amiibo. It's like, I want it and I can't find it anywhere. I want the, yeah, I swore off Amiibos. I, I was like, swore off Amiibos when Amiibos were invented. I, I I have a Diddy Kong Amiibo in my living room that I never will do. I don't even know who Diddy Kong is. What am I going to do? Whoa, whoa. It's one of the Kongs, dude. Watch How? Godzilla How versus Kong you? and get your answers. You Get into Slack and get your... Kong family education immediately. I am start looking that again, Greg. to unload Amiibos. I don't want them anymore. I don't want the Lynx or the Zeldas or the Captain Falcons. I don't want them. The only things I want are my Pokemon Amiibos because they're Pokemon. I bought an Incineroar Amiibo yesterday because I'm worried now that maybe one day Incineroar will be impossible to find. I, I now have an Incineroar Amiibo. I'm missing Pichu. Uh, and I want Animal Crossing. Those are the only two Amiibos I want. I want my Animal Crossing Amiibos. I want my Pokemon Amiibos. If you're Diddy Kong or anyone else, you're you're going out the door. Don't on eBay. I, I, I'll have to figure out how to get rid of them. But eBay. Your like favorite Will, place. I want these Monster Hunter Amiibos. That they're impossible to find. Yeah. You just can't find them. Although, first clue, uh, set, buying them as individual Amiibos... I hate that these words are about to come out of my mouth. GameStop exclusive. Yep. So first off, I'm now gotta... following Amiibo news on Twitter. So when they tweet about Amiibos being up, I can click the link and then. Oh, dang. What, are, what, what, 
what are they even? What what are the amiibos of? And one's a dog. One's the dog. Get one Palamute, yeah. one Magnomolo, and one Palico, obviously. And then one's the, yeah, the the new monster. And I think they give you exclusive outfits in the game when you scan them. Correct. That are really okay. cool. Okay, that I was like, and then you can use them in Mario Kart. Like, yes, well, the... Di- well Diddy, the Diddy Kong amiibo ain't getting me anything. And Try I it. Think, I don't think Have it's ever it got on me there. Anything. Did no, you, you get? A, you could have gotten a Diddy Kong outfit. You could have gotten a special Diddy Kong hunt where you hunt down the Kong family, kill them, and carve them up for their pieces, and then you wear Funky Kong's hat as a helmet. You know, I think Monster Hunter would sell even more <laughs> if you could skin a Funky Kong and wear him as your outfit. Oh, man, <laughs> if I could kill Kongs. Mm. Get that good Kong hunting. Okay, can I, I need to complain if that's... Oh. The, the, we don't we go, there's not yeah. enough complaining on the show uh the whole support your local board game store i'm off this train why what uh, shop I, local you jerk uh i there there's a there's a local board game store will has been to it many times yes the, called board game barrister yes that's where uh, i pulled a full art mew from a pack of Pokemon cards in 2013. Mm-hmm. Yes. I got a long, a long history board game barrister. Uh, they you, they used to host Pokemon leagues on Sundays. Uh, it's where I, I met my friend Kid. Uh, his name is actually Kid. Um, <laughs> <laughs> two Ds. It's got two Ds. It's got two Ds. Like Kid uh, Nintendo. Met a lot of good people through board game barrister. Met my friend Vinny through board game barrister and everything. You know, been going there for like eight years. Because of the pandemic, they went from three locations to one location. They like closed down two of their stores. Hard time. Dang. dang. Mm-hmm. I talked about like two weeks ago, I walked in, they had battle styles and they were charging $75 for an ETB supply and demand. So I went back into board game barrister this weekend. I was like, I need some more penny sleeves. They didn't have any penny sleeves. Fine. No big deal. They had plenty of other sleeves. I was only looking for penny. Um, and then I saw they had uh, 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 an older Sun and Moon set on their shelf. It was a three pack. It was a Necrozma special edition thing. And from what I recall back in the Sun and Moon days, which is like four years ago, it was like a like a seventeen ninety nine box of mm-hmm. cards, three booster packs of your your promo card. And I was like, how much is that Necrozma? And they were like thirty five. And I was like, mm, that's double the price. But also, they don't print this anymore. And I was like, you know what? Supply and demand. Welcome to the world of Magic the Gathering. Yes. What? You know what? Support local game stores, yeah. right? I'll give me the Necrozma. I'm here. I'm spending five dollars on whatever I have in my hands. Give me the Necrozma. And I was like, you know what? Hey, do you guys have like those Alolan? So it, this is a thing they're doing with the TCG. Every month they're releasing jumbo size of starters. So for uh, March, it was the Galar starters. It, it came in this big booster pack. It's three jumbo cards, and then it's two smaller booster packs. And retail price for that is $9.99. And so I for the for the YouTube, here's here's the here it is. Here's the jump the jumbo, the jumbo booster pack. This was the the galler. There you go. So this is $9.99. And they're doing that every month. So in April, it's Alola, and then in uh May. June, May. <laughs> May is whatever it comes April. before Alola, uh, Kalos. Oh boy, yeah, yeah. This, is a, this is a rough conversation. I mean, technically, Hoenn comes before Alola, but yeah, yeah, we'll let that go. So, I was like, Hey, do you guys, did you guys get the uh, you know, it's April 3rd, do you guys, did you guys get the Alolan things? And they were like, Oh, yeah, and I was like, Oh, cool, they had like four of them, I didn't even see them on the shelf. I was like, Let me get one of those. This was my mistake, $100. Nine ninety nine is MSRP. Yes. Uh, what's the S stand for, Steve? In MSRP. Scam. Scam. Yes. <laughs> exactly. Uh, the S is for suggested. Suggested. <laughs> not actual. It's not Mar or Map. They charged me thirty dollars. Triple the price. Mm-hmm. It wasn't mm-hmm. even double. Mm-hmm. It wasn't even 20. It wasn't 50. I, you know, in my head when I was like, give me one of those. I was like, I found it. I don't have to worry about finding it online. Don't have to worry about shipping. Get the instant satisfaction. Like, I know it's going to be more expensive. Maybe 15, maybe 20. 
thirty dollars. I'm yeah. taking it. I'm returning it. I haven't opened it. I got the receipt. We're taking it back. I can't. But in the moment when they to rang do it what? up, to to get them where? Well, where else? No, he, get he them? doesn't really want them. He was trying to be kind and generous, and now he's going to get no, his I, money I, back and spend I, that money at McDonald's, where he'll get real value for his. I dollar. want. Uh, I want the Alolans the the pack. But when I but somebody was like, "Oh, my Target had a bunch. I I got a couple. I'll send you one." Okay, cool. I'll yes. pay oh! Patrick. Yes. Oh! Yes. yes. This is an issue, though. I agree, because this is also an issue with the latest release for Magic the Gathering, where the if you go to Target, you can get a pack for the pack price, which I think for that one is six dollars and 50 cents. If you go to your local game store, you're not getting it if they even have any less for less than ten dollars. And it's the same pack. It's the same cards. The Barnes and Noble, which is like. The same hallway as the barrister, because again, when Will saw me in June, we went to Barnes and Noble. Yeah, we went to yeah. barrister. It's in the same mall. It's like less than 45 seconds. They have tons of Pokemon cards behind the counter. At MSR, at actual MSRP. You you know, limit two. You know, go back to your car, put a wig on, come back in, get another two. I mean, it's fine. Um, just wait till the employees rotate. It doesn't matter. But put a wig on. They got. They have. <laughs> Yeah, I'm, I'm eager to see your collection of wigs so you can scam the Barnes and Noble. I have all these wigs and glasses and noses that I put on so I can get more than my two packs of Pokemon walking oh, yeah. in. Two blister packs is, is more than enough for me. I it is it is bold to charge three times the price mm-hmm. yeah. of ultimately like. There is nothing of value in this. There's it's, nothing of value of any of them. Well, the in value shining, is what you put in it shining, in there. Yeah, in Shining Fates, you can pull a $500 Charizard, right? Yeah, but well, you're no, not no, no, sell it. but still, no, no, no. In Shining Fates, at least you have cards you can play. These extra large cards, you can't even play can't them play. unless you're playing I mean, extra so large cards. You're league. saying that I didn't want to pay extra for collector's items, a thing that I can't even use, a thing that is in high demand, a thing that larger chains get. Uh, more access to supply to. So Barnes & Noble has a completely different distribution method than a local game store does. So they have to eke out what's left after the giant corporations get it. And you're waltzing in here saying, I'm down with my local store yeah. that is fighting to survive against these giant corporations oh, like Target. Oh, no. has been, has been overcharging people for years. Yeah, yeah but they no. had to close two locations. You oh, just said it. Was over here weighing packs as well. That's why I can't. <laughs> Look. If look, they want, look, look what? What am I looking at? I'm looking look, at a for, scam artist with wigs in his car, so you can I, rip off a of Barnes and Noble. Is what I'm looking at. No, I'm not ripping off Barnes. I'm not uh, poor Mr. Barnes and Mr. Noble. <laughs> yeah, what? Is, Mr. Noble doesn't have food for his table. When when Omi, when, when I guess it's just how I would resell stuff. Like when when Animal Crossing was real hot. Don't you laugh at me? When Animal Crossing was real hot, remember this back uh, a year ago? Yeah, a year yes, ago, exactly yes. a year ago. Yeah. It, was, it was it was hot and sweaty. People were all over Animal Crossing. I was sitting on a gold mine of Animal Crossing TCG cards, mm-hmm. the Amiibo cards. Mm-hmm. I had I had all the good ones too. Mm-hmm. I had the Marshalls. I had the the Julians. I had I had everything that people wanted, and I had zero desire to use these cards. Like I, I collected them. I didn't have the full set. I was like, you know what? And then, and then people who like my content, they were like, can we buy these off you? And I was like, I don't even know how much they are. And like the Marshall card at the time was going for $80 on eBay. And I couldn't in good faith sell these cards at what eBay was charging to people who support my content. And I think I ended up selling Marshall for like half the cost. I was like, well, I'm like, I just felt awful. And so like my mindset of going into a barrister, I don't mind paying a little bit extra for something to get it right now, but three times the price for ultimately just a silly collector's item that will not be worth anything. That's uh, all it is. That's all it is. Like I understand the the certain like it's hard to keep shining fates on shelves. It is not hard right now to keep battle styles on shelves because this is what I said. Battle styles is not a particularly good set. When when you open up this Galar starter pack, you get two booster packs. You don't know what booster packs you are. One of them is guaranteed sun and moon. 
there's nothing in sun and moon that is worth more than like $10. There's a, like a full art Lily. That's maybe worth like $16. Everything in this booster pack, you're better off keeping this booster pack sealed and then putting it next to your ancient Mew. Cause if you open it, you're going to get 45 cents worth of value out of this. Mm -hmm. And that comes in this. So there, the $30 for whatever the Alolan, I don't even know where it is. It's my floor right now. The, the Alolan starter, I'm sure it comes with another sun and moon because they got to get rid of these. It's all bad. I can't. Like you're paying thirty dollars for ultimately two booster packs and three oversized jumbo cards that aren't worth anything, and you yes. paid it. Well, he's going to return it because I hate he, it all. The problem is he didn't ask. This is the real problem. The fundamental the problem. problem didn't ask the price. The you life didn't ask the price. lesson to learn yeah. is ask how much something costs mm -hmm. before you make the purchase. Mm -hmm. But you, you've like you've also just made me a salty customer of of, of that, the audacity of charging that much. You are only a salty customer because you have a group of people that are saying, I have all of these others. You have a group of people that said, I got one at Target for free. If you had been spending all day searching your targets and you didn't find one and they finally had one, you this was the last place you went and you really wanted this, you'd be like, yeah, 30 bucks sounds reasonable for the mm -hmm. amount of time that no, I, I can, just I wasted. On, I can go on Cool Stuff Inc. and get it right now for 20. The only difference is I got to wait for like four, four days for it to arrive. Yeah, you're paying for instant now. That's the thing. They have it in stock, taking up their space right now. And that's the I think it's not the for. it's not like the base value. It's it's the fact that it's three times the price. So if it was like a like I got news for you about clothing. <laughs> <laughs> you know, like if it, if it was if it was even even something like uh, the ETB, which is forty dollars, and they're charging seventy five dollars for it, that's not technically double the price. It's close. But three times the price for this is is I don't know. It's unbelievable. It well, it's too far for you, but it's not unbelievable well, for a lot of yeah, people. Yeah, just you gotta you gotta believe it because that's where we are in the world right now. We won't I be mean, here in a, a year of, from now. Yeah. I mean they're they are in a tough spot hustling as best they can. But if they're they in are the fighting spot. against online vendors who are willing to cut things in half because online vendors have a vast network of people that they can get cards from that small shops generally don't have. I don't think they're a small shop though. I think they get. I think they get plenty of. How many they, locations are there in the in the United States? Well, they had right like now. They, they had three in the Milwaukee. And, so, like and how many are left? One. <laughs> so what is your definition of a small shop if it's not a single shop in one city in America? I mean, as long as they're as long as they're treating their distributors like like this distribution is, is more so like having a long relationship with somebody and then fulfilling the orders like you. But, you can, yeah, you, but you the amount that you can order. Still, even the same distribu distributor will give different prices to a much larger chain because they can they can order more, so they get a better discount than a single shop can. Like Diamond Comics can sell cheaper to a chain than a local mom and pop store. No, because no, the I, local I, mom I understand, pop is, I understand all of that, price. right? <laughs> I understand that they may only get you know two hundred ETBs versus a Target, which gets you know, 2 million ETBs right. throughout all their stores. I get that. My complaint, my core complaint is they're blatantly ripping off the customers that keep coming to that store instead of just being like, put up a limit of like one Pokemon per item and lower the price instead of trying to make a huge profit off the people who are trying to support you. <laughs> but mm. they have, that, that, that is my they have, point. they have four. They are counting on hopefully getting four people to come into their shop, which may not happen, to limit that product. I mean, they may only sell one a week because one person stops by their store and they have made an investment that they need to move at a price they need to price it at to to still make a profit because traffic is down and they don't have a thousand people going to a target who might buy it on impulse. They have people who are specifically going out of their way to go to a board game store in a pandemic where there is one location. They have to make the choices they have to make. You don't have to buy it, well, but I'm not going to knock them for the business were, price were, of their own were, pricing. They were charging and ripping off their core customer. <laughs> that's true. That's that's kind of true. That's kind of where my thoughts were going. Is like 
Maybe they need to keep in mind that if they have better prices, they would have more traffic through their store. I mean, their location is in a mall. It's not out it's of not the way. It's not a good mall. Uh, it's not a bad mall. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, no, I mean, we're not talking Brookfield Square. We're talking right. Yeah, Mayfair. exactly. We're talking Mayfair here. Mayfair. Mayfair's okay. Brookfield Square is down to two restaurants. In Nobody there. goes They're... to Wauwatosa. All right, we're going to take a break. When we come back, uh, we will uh, file the lawsuit for Greg and being associated with small, small business, big profits. <laughs> Bring it. Bring it. My lawyers will crush you. We have a Patreon. Uh, we'll be back <laughs> after the break. And we are back from our break. Uh, based on our past conversation, this might be Greg. Man breaks into card store with a rope, stole Pokemon cards. <laughs> they haven't caught me. What does the rope have to do with anything? Isn't it the, isn't it the come down from the ceiling type of a thing? Ooh, they go, uh, go through the, uh, Mission Impossible. Yeah, there. they went through the air vents and then popped it open and then shimmy down the rope. Maybe maybe this I've is why this TCG prices are so high. Yeah. Just theft. Uh, who sent this in? Uh, Haley sent this in uh, in our Slack community. Uh, 28-year-old Japanese man in Ikiburiko. Hey, I was there. Ikibukuro? Um, Ikibukuro, yeah. That's where I met the cult girl. That's where... Oh, um, yeah. That's where uh, Do Ra 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 takes place. That is the Pokemon Center Mega Store is there, which sure. is probably the worst Pokemon Center I went to. It was very, wow. mm. it was like the Brookfield Square. Dang. It was, it was, it was, it was no May, it was no Mayfair. Uh, anyways, 20 year old, 28 year old Japanese man has been arrested for the suspicion or of theft for stealing cash and trading cards worth thousands of dollars. The man is suspected of stealing uh, both Pokemon cards and Yu-Gi-Oh cards by breaking into a card shop. He hung a rope uh, uh, from ha, the ha, roof ha. Uh, into the top floor of a six-story building, entering the building by breaking a window. Uh, he uh, broke into a specialty card shop. Um, I'm not... Card shop is... All in Japanese, so I'm not sure what the name is. Hmm. He, he did that in uh, at 5 a.m. on March 23rd. He stole a uh, cash worth of um, 300,000 yen, which is uh, 2,700 USD, and 80 trading cards, including Pokemon and Yu-Gi-Oh, with an estimated value of 1 million yen. Dang. Dang. Which is about $9,000 USD. Uh, according to Tokyo police in their investigation, their, the man's statement was, quote, I was in rock climbing club when I was a student and I thought these would sell well, mm -hmm. uh, end quote. This was also rock climbing anime. I don't think there is. There's a skateboarding anime that's actually not bad and actually not good. Uh <laughs> Like a this, lot of anime. This was also paying off his debt that he admitted. Uh, so he. Yeah, stealing to pay off debt. Um, there's some more stuff here, but that's pretty much the gist of it. I mean, I learned a lot of what not to do. So, mm -hmm. how did he get caught? 
I don't know. It doesn't say. Interesting. Look, it's a slow news week. This is what I got. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least it is within the current time period that we're in, and it has yes. not gone back to the past. I mean, it happened two weeks ago. That's pretty news relevant. It's pretty newsworthy. Uh, Plus, this is off. It just shows to go. Yeah, crime doesn't pay. Correct. Unless you're the barrister and you're charging three oh, times. That's the not crime. That's not crime. It's it highway crime. robbery. It, it is a crime. It is a highway it's robbery. Either. Highway I'm pretty robbery. sure that ball isn't on a highway. <laughs> uh, learn to read. <laughs> on a lighter note, this is on Pokemon.com. Learn to read with Pokemon Primer's ABC book and Pokemon Primer's 123 book. These are already sold out, by the way. I know. I tried to get them for you, Steve, but they were sold out. Oh. I will never know the proper alphabet now. You can put a smile on the face of the youngest Pokemon fan in your life thanks to, thanks to Pikachu Press's new Pokemon Primers book series. The first two entries of the series, ABC and 123, provide a fun, engaging way for children to learn about the alphabet and numbers while taking a trip through the ever-entertaining world of Pokemon. These charming board books sport sturdy pages, perfect for small hands, uh, they are loaded with adorable illustrations. Each book features over 100 flaps to flip and reveal, along with little readers to discover secrets such as Pokeballs, berries, and more, providing children a great way to interact with the book while providing a solid foundation for learning. And if the child or parent is new to Pokemon, each book uh, also includes a pronunciation guide for names of all the Pokemon they encounter as they read. And it's sold out. So I just like on this one picture on the website, it's the Ditto page. And it just says, what are you doing, Ditto? And I, think, <laughs> I think that's I, a solid question. I also find it interesting that they left out the key uh, sets of foundation for a future Pokemon consumer starting at an early yes. age. When do kids start reading? Three, two? No, no five. Depends. You got. You got to I mean, get kindergarten. Is the real it's, reading time? People start kids early. I don't know. Yeah, well, that's true. I mean, my nieces and nephew all knew sign language before the age of one. So, but that's yeah. just language acquisition. That's different. I mean, I didn't learn where Russia was until like yesterday, eleventh <laughs> grade. Uh, what Russian was? <laughs> where Russia was. <laughs> <laughs> the MPS education. This is off Pokemon.com. Pokemon Sword and Shield offers Gigantamax Cinderace in raid battles. Celebrate the season's cutest uh, hair hair bring bingers hair harbinger. harbingers harbinger. What's a harbinger? I need that book. Say the harbinger. I need that yes. book ASAP. What the heck's a harbinger? I'm certain it's not going to appear in that book. Are you? Hold on, I, I can look what? up on Safari here. A person I, or thing that announces or signal sing, signals the approach of another. Uh, yes. Yeah. Like Absol is a Absor. harbinger of disaster. Oh, yes. Got it. A b bunny themed event in Sword and Shield from April 4th. This will be over by the time this yeah. is from April uh, till April 4th, uh, 5 p.m. PDT. Players will see an increased chance of Azumarill, Lopunny, Diggersby, and truly, truly lucky trainers. Not if you're lucky. Truly, if you are lucky, you might encounter a shiny Azumarill. Throughout the event, Gigantamax Cinderace will make an appearance. Trainers will not be able to catch the Striker Pokemon, but defeating it will reward the trainers with lots of useful candy. Strike fast because Gigantamax Cinderace is only available through April 4th. And yeah. Wait, so, so they, the striker Pokemon is Cinderace? Yes. Yes. Okay. So they just did the Lilliganth event last week. They hit us with another event this week, and I am out of wishing pieces. I was able to get wow. a shiny Azumarill. You out of wishing yeah. pieces? Yeah, I have one. I've heard of. I ha I, look, I spent 200 last week, and I spent 200 <laughs> this week. It's a rough I life. Kind of <sighs> forgot about this whole event. Because we were watching the second season of the time it got reincarnated as a slime, which has literally eaten up. Because we restarted the entire series from episode one and then discovered season two was out. 
And that's all I've been doing this weekend. So I did not play any of this. And I'm not sure whether you recommended that anime to me because it's actually good or you're trying to it trick is... me into watching some real garbage. <laughs> I said it was it good. It is my top three anime. It is in the top three. <sighs> I love it very, very, very Look, much. Look, they are trying to keep people home so you folks will stop running out like wild men and women grabbing up all the TCG cards. Yeah. So they're right. like, let's get some special yeah. stuff going on in Sword and Shield to keep them at home so we can finally restock the shelves and bring prices down. Let's celebrate pagan holidays by throwing a bunch of bunnies up. Yes. Um, the Cinderace was cool. It was, uh, I was hoping maybe it'd be like Hard. Mewtwo or Zara Aura or is it a little tricky, but that's pretty yeah, but easy. Those aren't bunnies. I mean, you're right. You couldn't catch, <laughs> you couldn't catch the Cinderace. Um, oh, but it did give a lot of candy. I think it gave six XL and then six L and the other rewards it normally gave. So it was it was quick. It like I would say the Cinderace is easier than the Azumarill. Azumarill was real thick. Took uh took a while to knock knock him out. Well, I mean Azumarill also, has all, always been a beefy boy. Yeah. Also, Azumarill had Sap Sipper. So the amount of people that would bring in grass type Pokemon and then use a grass type move, and then I was like, oh gosh. Yeah, look who's talking, buddy. Yeah. Yeah, Not me. Captain Storm Drain. Mr. Hey. Pot, let's Miss... talk to the kettles. Yeah. Not only did I bring a Venusaur, because Venusaur resists water type moves, I was hitting him with the, the old sludge bomb, because, you know, fairy, weak to poison. Mm -hmm. It was the best of both worlds. Mm -hmm. You know who's better at that? Rose Raid. Uh, Gigantamax Venusaur? No. <laughs> Pokemon Masters. <sighs> this is on Pokemon.com. Scout to Diantha and Gardevoir and battle Latias in Pokemon Masters EX. And the, oh, they don't even have it in here. Okay. Oh, yeah. And then the May and, and Lopunny. Yeah. And Burr, 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 Burge, Berg. Berg, 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 Berg and Togepi. It just says that, look, I'm not going to read the press release. It just says that these characters are added to Masters. And Greg, I did you get your Diantha? Diantha? I got two. Two. Dose, oh, man. Diantha. Good pill. Good pulls. Yeah. And I'm now out of gems. That's what you, happens so, with gotcha games. So you're not going to pull for May or? I tried to pull. I had a few left. I tried to pull for May. I, again, got all threes, which going to give them a whole bunch of feedback about how bad I think they're... I think DNA is, is is listening Greg I pulled a lot and I was getting non-stop four stars uh well that's how randomization <laughs> works <laughs> because just as many people didn't so oh, I was swimming in the four stars and I thought of you the entire time yeah uh I mean I got I got Iris and I have I got Deantha twice which brings you know power to oh you got Iris good. nice uh, and then who did I get just randomly? Oh, I got Bianca for I'm like, oh, I didn't have Bianca. Okay. <laughs> this is a, literally one that nobody uses. And I forgot I, uh, it was even in the game. Yeah, but now you got it for your collection. Yeah. Well, That's right. Your digital collection. I pulled a lot on May. I ended up getting Piers, which is cool. Oh, I, I like got Piers. Piers. Um, but no May. So I'll, I'll pull again in like a week or two. I got I to gotta save some more. Uh, the Easter event is fine. Yeah, it's I guess okay. It's just, is I guess Diantha it's... the Easter event? No, she's oh. the 1.5 anniversary yeah. event. Uh, yeah. The I'm not a huge fan of the fact that, like in previous events, you could just go to the lower levels and get all the eggs you all you needed, and you know they use them in various combinations. This time they added a high-end Lucario raid that you can only get from the ultra hard battle, or you can trade in lower ones at a really bad rate. And I'm trade not in a fan of lower them. Lucarios. Yeah, so there's different eggs. There's Baneri eggs and Torchic eggs and Togepi eggs, and you can combine them to make Lucario eggs. Are we talking about masters? Yeah. What? Where? <laughs> what? What? What do you mean where? <laughs> Okay. Oh, open is this, up your masters. Are you talking about the Easter event they just added? Yeah. Oh, I haven't done that yet. I thought you were talking about the like 
Igly buff eggs that they added. We talked about like yeah. last week. No, 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 is that where no. like everybody puts in one egg and then you like spin it and then I it wish. keeps hitting the spin and then everybody gets a random egg out of it? I wish. Because that's talking actually, about... remember when Pokemon was fun? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It was when things were reasonably priced and not triple. Uh, is oh, it Passio? Oh, is this who we've become? Yes. Is this bitter uh, yeah. old Pokemon yeah. complainers? I, is, when were we not? Black and, bringing back mini games <laughs> and Pokemon games, man. Are we talking about Passio's Egg Explorers? Yes. We were okay, talking I haven't about done that, that yet. And you said and, it's okay? Uh, I mean, the event is fine. Like, the story is fine. It's a, it's, it's a, it's, it's a, I think it's one of their weaker storylines, but do me, a, do me a favor and go into the exchange items. Um, I see Togepi egg, binary egg. Oh, yeah. Okay. I see that exchange items is under store, right? Yep. Gotta go to Trisha real quick. Wait till they give her a Pokemon. Yeah. Why doesn't she have a Pokemon? She's so the- 50 Lucario eggs gets you okay. 300 Lucario eggs gets you the tech move candy. Yeah. Or the support move candy. Or the strike move candy. But if you go down, you'll see that you can get Lucario eggs by doing an exchange at a terrible, terrible rate. Hmm. Oh, I see. So you can do 40 Togepi and 20 Benary for 10 Lucario. Doesn't seem. Uh, super did bad. you see how much it costs to get the tech move? It's three hundred yeah. Arcario eggs to get a coin. Yeah, but the coins are bad. You want the candy? The candy is good, right? The, the candy is two hundred. Yeah, but two hundred is not that bad. I don't. How long does it take to get a Lucario egg? Uh, I've been doing this. Let me see. Let me try to do an exchange. Uh, eighteen days. That's a lot of time. Right now, I've been playing since this event was done, doing just the bare minimum, and I can get exactly 20 Lucario eggs from hmm. my time put in. So just do that 10 more times. Yeah. And then you got eight days left over. Don't give me that look. <laughs> That's logic, Greg. Logic. We'll figure it out. I'll do it. I'll do it. We'll, we'll, come, we'll circle back on it next week. Sometimes I feel like Masters is... By the way, full disclosure, uh, partnered with DNA. I feel like sometimes Masters is too generous with their exchange rates. Uh, I have never seen that. What? The last event, it was like super easy to do it. It was the, yeah. um, it was the like champions? the Galar event. The Galar event was like super easy to get everything. Yeah, but why is that a bad thing? I mean, you still had to play it every day to be able to get everything on that list. Oh, I did it. Well, I don't want everything on the list. I only want like the top four items because everything else on the list is like stuff I have a million of. Yeah, but that's not everybody. Okay, yeah. But if you just want the top items, it took me like three days to get everything. Okay. I don't want to spend. Why is that a bad thing? (laughs) No, that that, because then you're then you're like, I have nothing to do. You don't have nothing to do. You have a lot of other things to do in that game if you want. Like, what you're saying is, I don't want to, sp- I, I want to spend all of my time playing this special event and this special event only and not doing any of the other things in that game. Mm, I would because say that's what it feels like with this egg, with the exploration event. I would say, like, a lot of the Masters events aren't compelling enough for two weeks of repetition. I would say they're compelling True. enough for like a week of repetition, but I don't mind them lasting two weeks because because I might miss the first right. like five days. But I mean, repetition is with an asterisk because once you complete it once, you just skip ticket it. And you have at this point, I have 5,000 skip tickets. <laughs> I mean, I'm literally not spending any of my time doing these events, but saying skip ticket it 10 times. So that gets back to my fundamental question of, are you actually playing this game or? Uh, I mean, I play the event the first time to complete it. And then once I've completed it, I don't need to prove to the game 500 more times that I know how to defeat their puzzle. (sighs) I don't get it. Look, this isn't a gardenscapes where they repeat puzzles and it doesn't 
Let they you don't just repeat say, the puzzles do that often. Yeah, it's sure just they sometimes. do. There's only so many ways the jewels can fall. You'd be surprised, and it's <laughs> not jewels. What is it? Flowers? I think I think yes, the thing seeds. you might be missing about Master's Will is there's there's always like four levels of difficulty. Mm -hmm. There's like the easy that you do once and then never again. There's the normal that you do once and then never again. And then there's the hard that you do once and then you then you pour your skip tickets into yep. it. And then there's like a very hard. There's ultra that, hard or whatever it's called that I almost never do. I never do it because it is super hard and it requires you to like plan because instead of like one battle of three v three, which is mo like which is now ninety nine percent of masters, mm -hmm. it's a nine versus nine battle. Yeah. So you will get knocked out with your three, and then you're allowed six more, and you have their remaining team. So you go back in for a second time, yeah. and then so you actually have to like strategize what nine Pokemon you're going to bring, who is going to open. Yep. And, and then they if you get knocked also... out. You need to like strategize. Yeah. Okay, I need to bring in a Pokemon to clear these statuses because they'll remember all their boosts from last time, and I'm going in fresh. Yeah. So that and whole battle takes a a lot of planning, and it it's very grindy. And there's there is trial and error. You're probably going to fail the first. The rewards must be tremendous. They are. <laughs> that it's they're like, okay. They're okay. I they're mean, okay. they they are they are hard to get rewards. Yeah. But, I mean, the other thing that they do is that you have to have nine. A lot of times you have to have them at the very top level. So the 130 level cap. So you need to find nine that you have dumped all your resources in that. Like if you picked your nine to do that too, because that's a lot of resources, they may not be worth anything when you're fighting this particular ultra hard one. So the ultra hard stuff is very much a grind that I am not into. I just, I, I don't want to have to sit down and like plan out half an hour of what nine I'm taking. <laughs> I mean, and that I don't actually sounds go... like playing the game. That's yeah, that, 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 that's hundred percent. Yeah, that's a hundred percent playing the game. But it is like, I mean, it's not. It, it's like saying that Savage difficulty raids in Final Fantasy fourteen is playing the game. It's not. Like you can still get that exact same experience from the normal encounter raids. Savage has improved difficulty, but that's not playing the game any so, better or more. So this is my it's issue. Playing the difficult is playing the ultra difficult for questionable rewards. So this this is kind of my my approach to kind of looking at this kind of a thing. For games like Doom, where I want to play them for the story. Then mm -hmm. I do them on the lowest difficulty. Mm -hmm. That's something of a joke because obviously Doom has no story. But for games <laughs> I mean, like that, Pokemon Masters, which has no story, it has a story. No, Every story. Has, it a has, story. has a story. It has a story mode. <sighs> really? It yeah. does. It does. First, the story, Togepi the... runs away during the egg event, and it's mixed in with all the eggs. I will I will never fault Masters for having like actually the best Silver and Giovanni storyline yeah. that the main series game couldn't even bother telling. The interact one of the best part of Masters is the storyline and the interactions that they have between the trainers. The rest is okay. Is How there any way to get the we... story without really trying? How yeah, yeah, yeah okay. you just look at screenshots. <laughs> well, I mean, so all of the the stories are always just getting through the low level content and the low level content is really easy to get through. So you just do the normal difficulties to just get the storyline out of the way. And then to collect the rewards, it's the hard and ultra hard content. If you want the rewards and the rewards part, that's questionable. Like each, each event may or may not give you things of worth that are, that are easy or fun to get. So yeah, again, how else would we know that Diantha is our LGBTQ queen? She is. If it wasn't for Pokemon wasn't Masters. For she does. Wow. And she is. And she's amazing. I guess and Greg's also, how validated. do we know about Wallace and Steve on their honeymoon out in, out looking for stones if it wasn't for the storyline? 
how would we know about how capes and champions work if it wasn't for the storyline, one of the best storyline moments in the game? How will we know Hilbert's secret hobby if it wasn't for the Halloween event and Pokemon? What's Hilbert's Madison? secret hobby? What was I don't think Hilbert's we, secret hobby? You know, he dressed up as a werewolf and oh, that's right, living the dream. <laughs> He's living the dream as a werewolf. There's Who's a lot. Dream. The stories, the stories, <laughs> are, the stories of Masters are absurd, and they're the greatest thing of that game. It's the one thing that keeps me coming back because you just have no idea. This most current, the Easter storyline is not great. There's no real great moments in there. Well, I mean, they're using Ber Berg and he's. Well, they're using May. The story centers around May and Brandon being all dramatic with each other. And okay. Wally shows up for not enough time. Man, that Cyrus storyline was pretty hard. <laughs> <laughs> the Cyrus storyline was great. Like, okay, you're still a person that wants to murder everybody in the world. But why don't you work out with us? I guess. I'll destroy the world later. Shouldn't he be taken somewhere? He literally states multiple times that he wants to blow up the entire universe. He was taken somewhere. Passio. Yeah. And then Passio is like, I'm still going to blow everything up, but I, I guess I'll hang out for a while. Uh, okay. Last bit of news here is Pokemon Go. Uh, so the referral program is available now. It's worldwide. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, you can refer a friend by going to your friend stream, or friend screen, <laughs> or stream maybe, I don't know. You tap the invite, and then you share the code with somebody who has never played Pogo or somebody who hasn't played in 90 days. My only response to that is thanks, Irene. I'm I mean, letting her not open. Days. I'm, she hasn't opened it since the Kanto event. So, <laughs> so. Set, that, set that timer. Uh, once they import the code, either during the sign-up process or in the friend screen later, you will both receive rewards. As your friends reach milestones on their journey, you'll both receive more rewards. Make sure to help them all out, out, out along the way. What are the rewards? Um, they're pretty good. Did they yeah. specify somewhere? Because I didn't look, but not on I didn't website, say in the news article. Yeah, it says there was rewards like Pokemon encounters, rare candy, and incubators, and more. Incubators I could use. Mm -hmm. I don't have a list of the rewards, but there are YouTubers and websites that have the list of all they are like one of them is gibble i know Gib gibble will spawn for both people i hatched a gibble the other day mm -hmm, there's like stardust there's like exclusive stickers stardust i do not need stickers oh here we I go here we go for um so if you referred somebody so you would be inviting somebody else uh one you would get a glaring farfetch you would get a bag on a darmaka Charizard, Dino, Gibble, 50 Mega Energy, Raid Pass, three Incense, two Super Incubators, 30 Rare Candy, five Super Incubators, uh, 10 Pikachu stickers, 10 Pidgey stickers. And then if you were the person that was referred, if you were the one new to Pokemon Go, you would get a Raid Pass, a Super Incubator, Charizard, Chansey, Mega Energy, five Rare Candy, Lapras, three Raid Passes, three Super Incubators, five Raid Passes, a Snorlax, a Lapras, um, 10 Pikachu stickers, 10 Pidgey stickers. So I think the rewards are pretty all right. Mm. Yeah, it's pretty good. I mean, I don't think anyone's going to complain for getting a gibble by recommending somebody. It seems pretty good. And then uh, the Easter event is happening in Pogo right now. Is it? Because I only saw a mana this morning. Yeah, you're getting Flower Crown Pikachu, Flower Crown Chansey, Execute Marrow, Plusle, Minin, Binary, Bunnelby, which is now shiny. Wasn't it shiny before? No. Binary was shiny. Oh, Bunnelby Binary was shiny. Bunnelby now shiny. 
that's uh, speaking of events that's just another event <laughs> <laughs> they'll 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 seem fine but that's your pokemon go minute i think that's all our news we're probably forgetting something but uh well, we need to save something for next week so that's fine that's true yeah we need to s- s- store it up oh did we call for question of the week Yes. Sir. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Okay. That's all you. What's the question of the week? Won't you give us something to talk about? I almost kind of, maybe. <laughs> almost kind of maybe. Yeah, I'm not quite sure what it was. Brandon says, what are your favorite and least favorite puzzles in mainline series games? I just like most of the pushing rock puzzles. Oh, those Uh, are bad. I just, they're either they're on multiple levels, which just is just a pain to, to remember where you are. And then if you didn't do it right, they reset or they don't reset. I all the rock pushing puzzles are my least favorite puzzles. Period. Also, they're always in caves, so it's like Zubat Central. Mm. It's mm. just it's just annoying from beginning to end. I do not like them. Uh favorite. I liked the cannon. I don't even think it was a puzzle though. Remember when you got shot out of cannons in Skyla's gym? You had to point yes. you had to go to the canvas. <laughs> yes. You get, you get no, that was kind of a puzzle. Cause, yeah, because you had yeah. to like get, get the right ones to yeah. get I mean, to, like, get to the right place. The cannon, I thought that was funny. What? Is that black and white one? Because uh, in black and white two, Skyla's gym is you have to hide behind the walls when the wind blows. Yeah, no, yeah, black yeah. and white one. Black and white was, one was the being shot out of the cannon. Yeah. Uh, I like the ice puzzles. Ice puzzles are, are which ice okay. puzzle? Okay, oh, there's two sli- slidey ice puzzles. Yeah, there's like, the slidey uh, ice puzzle, Bryson's and then there's gym. Yeah, yeah, and then there's I the like... you step on the ice and it cracks, and then if you step on it again, you fall. I mm. like the slidey ice puzzles better than the cracky ice puzzles. Mm, I like both. I mean, they're both better than rock puzzles. Oh, a hundred percent. That's not a high bar. Uh, yeah, I like the slidey puzzles a lot. I think I like the slidey puzzles more, but I like the the steppy puzzles. I wish. The quiz puzzles were more interesting because mm. it was Blaine and Clement both had quizzes, yeah. and neither mm-hmm. one of them were all that interesting. I was actually going to say that Clement's was my favorite puzzle because, in order to register every Pokemon in Pokemon XY as seen with only mm. one game, you actually had to get Clement's puzzle wrong. Oh, clever. to be able to see the other Pokemon. Otherwise, you would come out with an incomplete scene Pokedex. What other puzzles are there? I mean, I know my least favorite puzzle, I would have to say, is uh, the, the Rayquaza Tower. I've said it before, just like the having to go use your bike to get over the cracked floor fast enough and like make the turns and everything. Mm-mm. Is that a puzzle or is that like a skill challenge? Well, because it was pretty, much, yeah. it was pretty straightforward. I mean, well, also for, like well, the ultra, ultra wormholes, right? Do you count them as a puzzle? Cause I no. also find those to be quite terrible. What, whatever Wolf, Wolfric's gym is, that's a puzzle. I don't know what that's called. The, the spinny ice gym. The, the mechanics where you step up yeah. and you spin it, yeah. line it up. I guess that would be similar to like Claire's. Also, rotate like in Hard Cold Soul Silver. You have to like rotate those platforms and then push them over the lava. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. It's like very similar to Wolf Rick's. Just there's just not a lot of complexity 3D. in Pokemon game puzzles because it is an all ages game. What so was... it's like you don't want to have your kid handing the <laughs> DS over and saying, "Hey, could you could you solve this for me?" It's too confusing. Didn't, didn't Fantina's gym have two puzzles between the two games? Yeah, was but I don't remember them. Different, because one was he had to go through the doors in the dark. Oh, you know what puzzle's the worst? Sabrina slash Valerie's puzzle. Yeah, it's just the, the, teleporting, like, the teleporting ones are just dumb. Mm, they're just they're frustrating. Not, 
there's not like a strategy to them. There's just, you remember which ones take you where. Yeah. And then you're good, right? There's not like good. a, no, I think well, I mean, it's, the, it's the, like the team rocket gym based puzzle too. the teleporters take you mm-hmm. and then you use the elevator for certain things. Well, the, team the, flare was the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> They're just not that interesting. The, I, I don't um, find them very interesting. I still find them better than rock puzzles. The mystery house was always fun because you had to keep coming back. Yeah, the trap house, the mystery yeah. trap house. Yeah. Yeah. I like the trap house. Omega Ruby, Alpha Sapphire, Ruby Sapphire. I don't this. It was in Ruby, trap yeah, house. Ruby Sapphire and Emerald. Yeah. It's just outside of Slateport. You go north and there's the guy that's like, welcome to. You have to well, find, you go you have in to, and you don't see anybody, don't see anybody and, he's and he's like, hiding. I'm hiding. Can you find me? And then you kind of just click around and then you eventually find him. And he's like, oh, come back tomorrow. Oh. And then he's like, come into my trap. Come into my trap house. And you walk in the back and then you have to go through the the ever changing rooms. Kogas was they, pretty OK. The was? like invisible walls. That was pretty all right. Mm, mm. Yeah. I can't believe they've only done Skyla's thing once, like the the. The, the air pushing the, you yeah. back like that. That is actually a pretty cool puzzle. Yeah, but there's not been another really good flying gym. True. Know, just copy and pa- like, look, they literally copy and pasted Sabrina's to Valerie's. It is the only thing different. I mean, is there was a reason room. for that, though. So there was. Yeah. Yeah. You're in a reason. house. You had to teleport around the house because they're fairy types. Well, but also, if you notice, the X and Y had a lot of like copy and paste from yeah, original yeah, yeah. red and blue. Yeah, they did. I mean, X I thought there was, was like a lore blue. reason, the, not the a original mechanical. like forest no. that you go through. I think the layout was exactly the same. Yeah, yeah. it is. Yeah, it is a lot. Uh, what was Olympia's gym? Is that do we consider that a puzzle? That's really no, just it's walking just, at a path. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh wait! Catching the fur fro in the in the gardens. Oh yeah. Chasing oh, the that's like down. the like the yeah, far fetched yeah. thing too. Yeah. Those are okay. They're they're way too they're way too short and simple to be like that engaging. You like I you mean, look that's, at it. that's Pokemon puzzles really. <laughs> Although, <They're> way... <laughs> we all know the best Pokemon puzzles were Pokemon, Pokemon puzzle. Shuffle. No Pokemon Shuffle. <laughs> Yeah, you got to wait till Saturday morning so you can do the Meowth one. Yeah, get all the coins. Yeah. Oh, man. I had strats. Trose that, that, that game is literally what got me into the practice of, like, when I first wake up in the morning playing a video game for, like, 15 minutes before doing anything else. Well, Pokemon of the Week. Oh, boy. Uh, wait, before Pokemon of the Week, when does that Pokemon Snap thing come out? When is April that? That's this month, 30th. right? April, April 30th. Oh, we got a whole month to get through for it, huh? To yeah, have probably have it. like one more trailer for it. All right. Uh, where's my last week's Pokemon? Last week's Pokemon was one that some people could guess, but obviously not Greg, because he tried to cheat and ask me who was the Pokemon. For Look, last I week couldn't I couldn't find my sheet. I found it. <sighs> There was a lot of uh, fluff in here because I was very distracted last week. And uh, the Pokemon is not featured in Pokemon Generations. Um, It looks basically like if you stare at the actual Pokemon, it looks like the ends of its upper arms look like fangs. And then its knees kind of look like teeth. And then it's kind of middle section looks like a open mouth tongue thing uh so it looks like it could be a pre-evolution to guzzlord um you can only find it in nature on victory road in Sinnoh in a dragon friend safari if you count that as finding it in nature and in the Haina desert through an sos battle uh and you can't find it in pokemon masters All right, who is it? It's Hippodon. No. It's Gabite. Gabite. Yes, correct. That is correct. Yes. It's funny that it looks like an open mouth, kind of like if you. you I like pretty much all of that line's designs. Yes. I think think all the designs of the whole Gibble line are really cute. Uh, well, that also that it's like nibble, bite, chomp. Yep. Uh, it's always fun when they do those kinds of things. Yep. 
Uh, I mean, Gabby and Garchomp both look like airplanes. I mean, and it doesn't really set off my shark fear. So interesting, <laughs> interesting. Um, but it's funny that they look like airplanes, even though they're not flying in any yeah. way or shape or form. They... Garchomp, one of the Pokemon that looks like it could be a Monster Hunter monster. Mm-hmm. True, true. Uh, shuffle icon, good. Uh, Gabite shares the same category with Drudigan. They're both known as cave Pokemon. Gabite's scales were stated to cure sickness in the anime special Pokemon uh, in the in the anime special Pokemon Mystery Dungeon Explorers of Time and Darkness. There was an anime for Pokemon Mystery Dungeon? Yeah, I remember that. I certainly don't. When does that I show up on that. Pokemon I TV? About it. Don't remember this at all. Due to the sensor that prevented Pokemon with offensive nicknames being traded in the GTS, an English language Gabite cannot be traded on the GTS without a nickname in black and white. Mm -hmm. What is the bad word? Uh, Gabite? Bite? uh, No idea. Gab? I think it had something with the I think it had to do something with the bite part of it, but I don't remember why. That's weird. Huh. Is there any other Pokemon with the word bite in their name? I don't think so. I guess it would have to be bite. Like bite my butt? Yeah. Bite me. Uh, oh, bite me? Yeah, that could be uh, it. How offensive is that? I mean... Is that, that's like a Bart Simpson Bart thing, Bart Simpson right? says that all the time. He also says, <laughs> eat my shorts. Yeah, well... All right, what about next week? All right. I was really unprepared this week, so I'm not even certain if this is going to allow people to hone in on a Pokemon or, <laughs> or not. Good luck, kids. Uh, A is for the ability Thick Fat. P is for Purple Shiny. R is for the region Hoenn. I is for Ice Ball. L is for Lower Brine Cave. Would you like me to repeat that, Greg? You were yes, looked, it was like you started writing a little too, too late. I did. A is for the ability Thick Fat. P is for Purple Shiny. R is for the region Hoenn. I is for Ice Bull. L is for Lower Brine Cave. Got it. All right. Well, that's our episode. Uh, We'll be back next week, of course. Uh, If you want to follow Greg on Twitter, it is at White Wing. Will on Twitter at Wash the Sink. I'm on Twitter at Dragging the Lake. Um, Will and I are doing the Monster Hunter podcast. The Carve uh, should be available in Spotify or iTunes or wherever you listen to podcasts. Just type in The Carve and it should pop up. Uh, We did one episode last week and should have another episode coming for you this week. If you want to hear about Monster Hunter and our thoughts on it. And uh, if you want Pokemon stuff and you want to follow the podcast elsewhere, Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, Twitch, uh, Twitter, all P K M N C A S T on the internet. And our subreddit is r slash super effective. If you want to join us over there, I think that's all I got. I think that's our episode. Thank you for listening. Thank you for watching. Thank you for being here. We will be back next week. This has been another episode of the Pokemon podcast. And we are super effective, super support your local businesses. Don't listen to Steve. True. True. <laughs>